Welcome to Opless TV. Today we have Nigel Kolegian, the founder and CIO of Quest Partners, a CTA with $680 million in AUM, with 13.5% annualized returns over the last 16 years. Now, Nigel, your CTA generates alpha through strict discipline to positive convexity in the markets. Now, before we get into your strategy, can you give me an introduction into your background in the industry? So uh, I started out uh, with a degree in electrical engineering. From there, I went to work in consulting and uh, by chance ended up being placed uh, in a project at Solomon Brothers uh, in the late 80s. And I became interested in system design pretty much on my own. So it became a personal quest to actually uh, you know, learn about system design and finance. Uh, I got an MBA from Columbia Business School. And after business school, I was ready to go, you know, ready to go to start the CTA. I had models running every day uh, and I was waiting for capital to, uh, to start an actual CTA. Couldn't raise uh, enough money to get going. Decided to actually take uh, a job as a trader in a long short equity fund for a couple of years. Uh, then uh, ran a fund of fund for a couple of years. Finally, in 98, I had uh, enough interest to start a fund of fund. And in 99, a CTA. Uh, initially, in 1999, I had a partner in the CTA. In 2001, uh, we decided to go our own ways, and in 2001, I started Quest. Part of our history is that uh, in 2003, we got an allocation from MAN Global Strategies, the Fund of Fund of MAN, and from 2003 to 2010, uh, uh, effectively 90% uh, of our capacity was uh, utilized by MAN. Uh, in 2010, they redeemed, and uh, we've been growing the business since. So, Nigel, how many products do you actually have and how many strategies do you run? So, we, we run four different strategies. Uh, the, the flagship strategy is the AlphaQuest original program, which has annualized about 13.5% over 16 years with 7.5% of annual Alpha to the CTA index. We also run a CTA replicator. Uh, that, one has, uh, that program has four-year track record, 86% correlation to the CTA index with about 1.5% of annual Alpha to the index. We also run a short uh, equity short buy strategy and a fixed income short buy strategy as well. Uh, the equity short buy strategy has uh, about 13% uh, of annual alpha, positive alpha to the S&P. Uh, and the fixed income strategy has about 1% of annual alpha to the US 10 year short. All of the strategies have generated alpha to their benchmarks. Nigel, give us a background into the traditional large CTA index replicator strategies and trend following strategies and tell us about the impact of style drift in these large CTAs. The way we see the CTA industry is that it, today it's easily replicable with the classical trend following strategies such as moving averages or channel breakouts. Our CTA replicator since we started in, in 2011 has generated an alpha of 1.5% to the indices with 86% correlation and it is 100% transparent. Uh, relative to these classical trend following strategies, we've seen seven style drifts introduce themselves in the CTA indices. These are a larger allocation to fixed income, which has been a very large contributor to performance. More allocation to very long-term trend following strategies, which are less capable of capturing trend reversals during high vol periods. An increase in allocation to long-only trading, which also is less positively skewed than shorts. Uh, an increase in allocation to equity and fixed income bottom picking, which is a very uncorrelated source of return, but again, negatively skewed. Uh, an increase in allocation to fixed equity long trading, carry trades in, for, in foreign exchange, and spread trading in commodities. All of these style drifts have negative convexity and result in negative returns during equity corrections. In particular, if you look at how the CTA indices performed in 07 to 09, relative to replicators that have beta of 1 to the indices, the CTA indices underperformed by 60% on an absolute level in over a two-year period as a result of uh, these style drifts. So the CTA indices as a result of these style drifts have become less capable of generating strong returns during equity corrections.
So what differentiates your core investment philosophy and your strategy? A key differentiator in what we do and in the alpha that we try to generate is that we have a very strict discipline in normalizing the alpha for the convexity that it's taking. So the more negative convexity a strategy is exposed to, the higher the alpha, the higher the Sharpe ratio. Now alpha, which is a byproduct of negative convexity, is highly cyclical, it's replicable, and I would say an investor does not need to pay incentive fees to be exposed to it. So particularity of the alpha that we've generated is that it's actually all positively convex. So nine out of 10 source of alpha today in the hedge fund industry being negatively convex, we are very limited in terms of what we choose to do uh, as we're aiming for positive convexity. Uh, this makes our alpha more stable and it actually is particularly attractive because it kicks in in periods of equity corrections. Can you elaborate for us and explain the concept of positive versus negative convexity in alternative investments and how it plays into your strategy? The difference between positive and negative convexity is that with a positively convex strategy, when you're making money, you tend to have larger returns. When you're losing money, you tend to have smaller returns. For a negatively skewed strategy or negatively convex strategy, positive returns tend to be smaller on the way up and larger when you're actually losing money. Another way is to looking at it is, is the acceleration in the returns when you're making versus losing money. In today's world, I'm saying 90% or every single hedge fund strategy outside of short sellers tend to make money slowly and lose money very fast. That's typically negative skew. Even CTAs, which used to be positively skewed, are now uh, have a neutral skew of around zero. So with negative skew comes an acceleration of losses once the market starts to go down. So if you're making money with 10% vol, you're losing money with 20 or 30% vol. So negative convexity with positive alpha, positive convexity with negative alpha. Effectively, outside of the convexity, there's very little alpha left in the hedge fund industry. One particular interesting factor to evaluate is, can we generate alpha which is positively convex at the same time, which is skill-based, which is not replicable? The dangers of alpha, which is negatively convex, is that they can get very easily crowded due to the very steady returns or high sharp ratios. We have shown that high sharp ratios come with larger drawdowns than lower sharp ratios. So strategies that are negatively skewed, such as most hedge fund strategies, tend to get crowded. When you sell insurance, there's a premium which is collected for selling that insurance. The risk of a storm against which the insurance is underwritten is not affected by the price of the insurance. This is not true in financial assets. As the price of the insurance becomes cheap and people continue to underwrite that insurance, the potential financial storm is initially delayed. But then once the factor is actually crowded, there's a deleveraging effect and you can have quite substantial corrections. The corrections are not due uh, to changes in fundamentals in that factor. They're purely due to crowding and leveraging, which is reversing. With negatively skewed strategy, you have alpha, which gets crowded, which is cyclical, which is predictably negatively skewed with very large losses. What is your process to find premiums in the market and to generate alpha for investors? The goal of our process is to generate alpha which is positively convex. Where the typical alpha in the hedge fund industry is due to negative skew or negative convexity, we want alpha which actually outperforms, which really kicks in during equity corrections or during vol expansions. The way we do that is we're looking for markets where the volatility has compressed or where the volatility is exhibiting certain uh, characteristics of, of potential vol expansion. So the upside vol versus the downside vol is very different. When the market is going up, the volatility is slowing or uh, going down. When the market is going down, the volatility is going up. Such characteristics in the volatility help us predict the behavior of a correction in the market when, it's, when it comes. So when we see these type of environments in the market, we're not actually entering a trade yet. We're, we're looking to uh, wait for a move to actually start. 
once a move starts, within a day or two, we're actually entering a trade. And the vol uh, environment typically helps us predict the size of that move. We also exit trades much quicker than a typical CTA, which, which makes us quite complementary to the large long-term trend followers. We're exiting trades when our alpha expectation goes down. So we try to maximize the alpha that we generate relative to the beta exposure that we have. So if you look at our returns, uh, our alpha to the CTA industry is over 50% of our returns. Our beta to the CTA industry is only 30% of our returns. So we generate very large amounts of alpha relative to beta. Uh, it takes a very strict discipline not to accept sources of alpha which are negatively skewed, such as mean reversion or bottom picking equities. We believe that those sources of alpha are highly unstable, and when they break, they break with four, five, six, or larger standard deviations, which are not very pleasant. And they typically break at times where you need uh, returns the most when equities are going down. In the process of uh, generating uh, positive convexity and alpha at the same time, we've realized that the optimal time frame to trade is between 7 to 10 days per trade, which is much more short term than the classical CTAs. This makes us uh, very complementary to a portfolio of large CTAs. As a matter of fact, during the three largest CTA drawdowns, we've, uh, our overall returns were positive. Uh, 2009 2014 CTA industry went into its longest drawdown ever we actually were making uh, returns in that period so uh, our time our time frame is very important in generating positive convexity we've seen that if you trade shorter than seven days per trade your positive convexity goes down if you trade longer term than 10 days per trade your positive convexity goes down as well today uh, if you look at uh, see typical CTA index replicators uh, you're trading 30, 40, or 50 days per trade on average, so much more long-term than we are. By trading more short-term, you become more transaction cost-sensitive, but uh, that's where our volatility filtering techniques become critical, and that's where the skill comes in into what we do. So what environments can prove challenging for your strategy and how do you anticipate drawdowns in the market? The most challenging environments for our strategy is when typically when the implied vols are compressing very fast. So our largest drawdown was in 2004 when the VIX went from over 40 to about 10. Our second largest drawdown was in 2009 when the VIX went from close to 90 all the way down to about 15. Uh, in those periods is uh, our, our largest uh, drawdowns. Uh, and typically, uh, re there's a reduction in our alpha relative to the CTA index as well. The most important discipline in reducing the risk of large drawdown, again, for us, is positive convexity. When we, if you look at the drawdowns of our strategy, uh, historically, they've been only, uh, our largest drawdown has been 1.2 times our vol. For the CTA index, the largest drawdown is 1.6 times its vol. For the hedge fund index, it's 3.6 times its vol, for example. So uh, positive convexity means that drawdowns are a much smaller multiple of volatility. That's really critical for what we do. Uh, our largest drawdowns have uh, substantially decreased over time as we have been able to internally diversify the sources, uh, the sources of alpha that we've been uh, utilizing in our, uh, in our trading. When we are going into a drawdown, the rest of your hedge fund portfolio is typically having its top decile performance. So we're extremely complementary to a portfolio. We're not trying to be the best standalone investment. We're trying to make returns both in up and down markets and equities. But in particular, we're looking at our incremental risk adjust returns rather than our standalone risk adjust returns. So as an addition to a hedge fund portfolio, we're extremely attractive. Can you give some historical examples of volatility compressions and expansions and how you responded in your position? Two interesting periods uh, for our program were 2013, where the CTA index was down 5 and we're up 15%. Despite a low vol environment, volatility had already compressed quite substantially coming into 2013. Volatility was stable over the year, but throughout the year there were six 
short-term vol expansions or VIX increases, where the VIX went from 14 to 18. In each one of those uh, vol expansion periods, we, generate four to f uh, we generated 4 to 5% in returns. Overall on the year, we outperformed the index by 20%, despite a low vol environment due to our short-term trading style. Another interesting period is you know, January and February 2016. S&P dropped about 12%, CTA indices were up about 7%. We were up around 24% in the period. The vol expansion uh, that happened in that period was quite substantial and our models were able to uh, allocate, uh, to you know, have larger positions with very tight stops, uh, very high conviction positions, and we were able to return uh, almost four times uh, what the CTA index uh, returned in that period. Tell us who your investors are and why they're looking at your strategy. Investors allocate to us due to the uh, returns that we provide during equity corrections. Where during typical equity corrections you see the volatility of the typical hedge fund increase at exactly the worst possible time and the correlation to the equities also increase at the worst possible time. Uh, our returns are positive at those specific moments. So large sophisticated pensions are looking for uh, protection which is cheap or that actually even pays uh, during equity rallies are our typical investors. So today we have four pensions invested with us. Two of those pensions are actually uh, quite large with over 100 billion in assets uh, themselves. So very sophisticated CTA investors. Uh, other traders also use us as a hedge sometimes for option underwriting. So they have a short option book and they use us as a hedge for that option book.